So my name is Marcus Josephson. I head up Nozomi Networks for the Middle East. Uh, I'm a director looking after Middle East, Africa and Russia. What based are your out of Dubai. Do you, do you understand technology or do you understand industrial control systems? I would say I'd like to think that we understand both. Uh, no skills. Yeah, so me specifically, yes, I'd like to think that I understand both. But uh, industrial control systems is comparatively new for me. I've been in cybersecurity for the last 12 years. Actually, industrial control systems are everywhere, whether it's aviation, it's transportation, yeah. it's manufacturing, all that. And till now, how have they actually managed themselves as, as a siloed mm -hmm. environment, not uh, connected with anybody? I would say that they haven't really been focusing on cybersecurity for that part of the estate. Cybersecurity up until maybe two years back was something that in most organizations was only on the IT side. Now because of the threats, the increased regulation, the awareness in the industry, and of course a number of large incidents that the whole industry is aware of. Well, well, but for you, what has been the trigger? Why? I mean, is it because you can now, through gateways, talk to industrial systems? Is that the trigger that's making them sit up? Yeah, so I think the trigger for them is, like I mentioned, it's the external factor and the internal factor. The reason why they look at us specifically as a vendor they need to do cybersecurity, that's always where the conversation starts. But then when we go and speak to the operators, the guys that run the plant or the pipeline or whatever process we're looking to secure, they realize with the visibility you get from cybersecurity, that can actually help me improve my processes. So I can increase uptime, predictive maintenance, troubleshooting, all these issues with the help of the cybersecurity tools that we provide. So let's go into the Nozomi portfolio of solutions, what uh -huh. is it that you offer to the region? Yeah, so basically what we have, we have a uh, product offering that we sell via our channel partners. Channel partners just just Help AG, nowadays it is a lot, IBM, Accenture, Schneider Electric, ABB, these types of uh, resellers. Uh, so they work together with us uh, to resell our product. Uh, it's a network-based product, so we sit on the industrial networks and do the analysis from a cybersecurity as well as a visibility and operational standpoint. Typical cybersecurity solution vendor has half a dozen solutions. Yeah. Right? The CI also gets confused, yeah. needs to test everyone. What is your go-to-market approach for the end customer? Yeah. So really, we, when you start looking at cybersecurity for industrial systems, you start from zero most of the time. You might have a firewall at the perimeter, but that's, that's everything. If you compare to an enterprise network, we have agents, sandboxes, web filters, you have all these things, right? Here you start from scratch. So the first thing you need is visibility. So the first thing that we be able to provide to a customer is say, this is what your network looks like in real time. This is what all the assets connected to the network, that could be a PLC or an RTU or a pump, whatever it is. Uh, and then last but not least, this is uh, the operational uh, view. So not only we can see the network and the assets on the network, we can also see how fast is the pump pumping, how open is the valve, what's the temperature in the air conditioning. Okay, so, so what you're saying is if I look at a competitor, mm -hmm. it gives me a landscape and shows me endpoints which are vulnerable mm -hmm. or shows me yeah. unpatched servers yeah. and things like that. Yours is different. Yeah, that's part of the puzzle. So we have that, but also we have the industrial information, what goes on with the process. So from a cyber threat perspective, are you interested if, you know, Say that you have a threat in your network, you detect it, I have a malware, okay, that might be bad. But do you know if that's having an impact on your process? You might have a malware, okay, fine, but it doesn't affect anything. But you need to know in the industrial world, you need to see, is my oil still flowing? Is my, uh, you know, is my uh, electricity still on? These kind of things. So it gives, gives you a, a health map as to what is my, environment in terms of vulnerability and in terms of consequences. Yes, absolutely. So you can pivot from kind of three views. The network view, this is how everything fits together from a network perspective. This is how all the assets are sitting on the network. But last but not least, this is how the process looks. This is how the process itself runs across the network. So if I send a packet to a PLC or an RTU, that PLC and RTU are going to send a signal to open a valve or increase a pump speed or fill a tank we're able to pick up those values as well. So you can pivot from all these three perspectives. And that's very important, of course, in a cybersecurity incident. So tell me, so if there is, a, let's say, a potential malware indicator, mm -hmm. right, how does the remediation happen? I mean, does the solution allow inoculation, control, 
mm. uh, make perimeters protect and all that, uh, or does it then need another solution, another channel partner to come in and start doing the remediation? Sure, yeah, so that's a great question. So specifically for industrial systems, you don't want to have process impact. So if there would be a false positive with any kind of solution, say, okay, we find what we think is a malware and we will block something that could shut down a plant or, or have severe impact. So that's not what customers are looking for. The first thing they're looking for is visibility. And then once they have that, to your point, we can then tell other systems, third party systems, such as a firewall or a switch or something, we detected something, you do go and do something about it. Yeah. So yours is basically an alert system and a full uh, health map, threat map, to allow executive yeah. decision making and so on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. But what is the, what's the key uh, solution here? Is it the ability to translate digital to OT environments and how do you actually get the whole thing integrated as one? Yeah, yeah, so as an industrial control system cybersecurity vendor, what makes us stand out is we understand the protocols. So traditional IT protocols you'll still find them in OT environments, but they're not going to be the important stuff. So the ability to understand these specific protocols that run these processes, if you don't have that understanding, there's very little value you can add from a cybersecurity perspective. So today, uh, a lot of the so-called industrial assets mm -hmm. are being forced to become intelligent so that yeah. people can make out, are they cost effective, what do you do? So you take utilities, or you take mm -hmm. transportation, or you take machinery and yeah. all that. So uh, in the region, where do you see the hot spots in terms of the early adopters looking at industry? I mean, everybody yeah. has got cyber security. We know that sure. across, across yeah. the, the market. Who is industry, protecting industrial? Mm. Uh, so I would say the kind of verticals that started off first is oil and gas because of the huge monetary you know, implications of something going wrong, uh, as well as utilities, power and water. So those were the guys that woke up the quickest because they realized that everything they do, the core of oil and gas, the core of utilities, is their operational networks. So they were the first and it also has the biggest consequences. Now we're seeing other adjacent industries, it could be aviation, it could be transportation, building management systems, for instance, who are saying that this stuff is mission critical. If you think about Burj Khalifa or Dubai Mall or any of these places, what would happen if the building management system stopped working, for instance? What if the lights went out? What if the air condition didn't work? What if the uh, elevator stopped running? These kind of things could be very mission critical. And if you go back a few years, no one was even paying this any attention. So I think the, the ROI challenge mm -hmm. doesn't exist in your solution, right? Because the RO, the, 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 or the option of failure is so expensive yeah. that, that it seems to have a good ROI. Yeah, so the indirect ROI, the one that you're referring to, that pays for itself. It's very evident, right? right. So if a power plant or something would go down, the consequences nice. are enormous. Nice. That's one thing. Nice. But we, what we do, we go directly to the process owners and say, you know what? You run your pipeline, you run your plant. If I can help you, with troubleshooting, predictive maintenance, ascent inventory, then you could actually increase the uptime and the efficiency. So most of the time, the operators that run, run the industrial networks, they don't care about cybersecurity. They care about safety of people. They care about keeping the process running. When we come to them and show them the value of the additional things that we can add outside cybersecurity, they become the biggest proponents. So usually we start a cybersecurity discussion, but we always end with predictive maintenance, troubleshooting, asset management. So let's say if I was a, an airport, large scale airport, and mm -hmm. I wanted to improve the level of digitization. Yeah. Right? Uh, in the sense that they have petrol tanks, we have you know, the catering, and yeah. not all of these are digitized. They could, yeah. be, could be having their own protocols over there. Yes. So do I need to transform the organization and secure it at the same time, or can I have Okay, let me transform first, then I bring you in, or I secure yeah. first, bring them. What is your opinion of the best way to do this? I think you need to do it at the same time. Uh, and what you need to do, because you have all these legacy systems, you take the airport example, you have your uh, building management systems, you have your baggage handling systems, you have your x-ray systems, you have your waste, you have your water, you have all these different operational networks, and they are not secure by default. So they need to be secured. Before they are secure, before you start connecting them, because that's what digitization is all about, right? You take something that's not connected, 
you connect it and you start acting in a clever way around it. So if you, if you would skip the step of security, the digitization would come at a very, very big cost when it comes to, to risk increase. Yeah. So it needs to be hand in hand. But uh, tell me, in terms of the design, mm -hmm. do the industrial system engineers, uh, is there a design involved in uh, securing industrial control systems, just like yeah. in, in, in IP, you need yeah. to design sure. the firewall, yeah, yeah, firewall so yeah. uh, threat intelligence, yeah. Yeah. socks and all that, it's a bit complicated. Absolutely. On the industrial side, is it relatively more straightforward? It's a little bit more straightforward because you can't really do that much. So uh, if you want to put an appliance in line, for instance, so if you want to install an endpoint agent on, a, on something that runs, you know, what's called a human machine interface, something that controls the process, usually a Windows machine, that's not going to happen. You're not allowed because you would void warranty and people would just say, no, 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 no. So what we do, we sit off the network. So we configure a switch to say, send a copy of all the network traffic to us. That's all you need to do. And if that wasn't the case, we would not be successful. We cannot go into these customers and these mission critical networks and say, oh, I want to put my appliance in line. If the appliance would break, your process would stop. Explain this a little bit more. You put a switch and then what do you do? Yeah, so basically, they have existing switches already. So if you say that you have a PLC or an RTU that controls the valves and the pumps or the belts, whatever it is, that would be communicating to a Windows machine usually, called a HMI, Human Machine Interface or a SCADA front-end or a DCS. That traffic between the PLC and the uh, controlling device, that goes over IP and that crosses a switch. We just configure that switch to send a copy of the traffic to us. That's all you need to do. So that is the reason why we're seeing the adoption that we're seeing uh, and the growth that we're seeing specifically in so, this so region. that traffic which is copied to you, you can do the analytics on that and to do the troubleshooting. Yes. Product, but you're not really affecting. I mean, no. how are you actually controlling that, the industrial side then? Yeah. How, how are you protecting it? Yeah, so first, first step of any kind of cybersecurity is, of course, visibility. Before visibility of what's going on, you can't find the threats, right? So once we then find the threats, we can give an alert or we can automate and say like, okay, if we detect this, then the firewall needs to block this traffic or the endpoint agent needs to shut down this user from or something. From the original OEM? From the yes, OEM. Okay. yes. So you're not taking over their role? No, 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 no. So no, you, are, no. you are just enhancing the visibility? Exactly, exactly. And I mean, a big challenge for many of these end customers is that they don't have one OEM. They don't have only Schneider, Yokogawa, ABB, Emerson. 100%. They have all of them and they all speak different protocols and they all work in completely different ways. So a main challenge for them is, do I want to secure everything or should I just focus on one at a time? So the strength with Nozomi is it's completely OEM neutral. We I understand see, all I the see protocols. One contradiction here, which is that not all of these original equipment manufacturers, the legacy ones, mm. have actually brought in security control, even on an industrial scale. Yeah. I mean, they might have cut off and switches and other things mm. like that, but barring a few like Schneider you mentioned, mm -hmm. not all of them have actually brought in security to that level. Yeah. Do you agree or am I wrong in that? In that I would say that there's different. There's certain, uh, certain OEMs like Schneider Electric who so are very advanced. They have a very good security team. Yes. And they don't only secure Schneider Estate. They also go to other OEMs on their estate and say, we can help secure your plant, right? Then there are others who say, no, we don't do this ourselves. We need to work with others. But all the OEMs that I mentioned, more or less, are resellers of Nozomi, uh, and we have a very tight integration and partnership with them. Okay, so, but in case any XYZ OEM mm -hmm. does not have security inbuilt, I mean, industrial yeah. security inbuilt, then do you override, I mean, can, can you take over and provide security, or yours is Yes, so usually we provide whatever they provide for security, we come on top of that, right? Uh, so they usually might have an endpoint, uh, something, but they have nothing on the network, the visibility piece, threat detection. So we come into a greenfield. We're not swapping anything out. We're adding adding new components but to I the solution see, stack. I mean, based on whatever little bit we have discussed, I already see some level of complexity. Is the end customer able to administer this or is the channel partner the ideal person yeah. to actually start delivering so this? Of course, it depends on the end customer uh, and the channel partner. So we have a strong professional services team here that assist. It's not a managed service, but we get the implementation to a place where it's easily managed. The people that founded Nozomi, they used to work in a security operations center for a big oil and gas company. 
And the goal has always been that a level one or level two trained engineer with just a couple of years experience should be instantly able to get value out of Nozomi. If it's for troubleshooting, cybersecurity, asset management, it has to be easy to use because the guys that we deal with, they're not cybersecurity operational, sorry, uh, cybersecurity trained engineers with 15 years of experience.